If you intend to measure the vibration levels in-house, then there are a few points that you should be considered to ensure that your data is valid. So let's have a look at some of those issues. Your vibration meter should be able to measure three axes at once. It's called triaxial. And ideally, should be able to produce a result from these figures known as the root sum of squares, RSS, or sometimes called the vector sum. The meter must measure the vibration with the hand arm frequency weighted filter WH. Without this filter, the results will be useless and there is no way to correct for it afterwards either. You should be able to measure the AEQ or acceleration equivalent value to get the energy average of your measurements. Here are a couple of Castle vibration meters designed for this purpose. This is the Castle Vexo which is dedicated to measuring hand arm vibration. It only has the option of fitting one type of sensor, which means there is nothing set up before each measurement except the range, making it extremely simple to use. The sensor also has a robust cable compared with most accelerometers, which can be useful. Results are stored in the meter and can be downloaded to a PC program or sent to the Castle Cloud for use in our online exposure calculators and tools database system. If you don't use this type of equipment very often, then a product like the Vexo can be highly beneficial as there is no learning curve each time you pick it up and need to use it. The Castle Vib A8 is a dual purpose instrument as it can measure whole body vibration and has a Various features such as auto sensing for the transducer, a larger memory and bigger, clearer display. If you think you may ever have the need to measure whole body vibration, then the Vib A8 is the better bet. The seat pad accelerometer can be fitted later, so there's no need to purchase this up front either. The Vib A8 also has a brighter screen, more memory and few other features than the Vexo, such as axis mapping, which is changing the orientation of X, Y and Z. And this can be very useful for aligning your measurements to the HSC guidebook, both for hand arm and for whole body vibration. Right, here we are. So I um, have my VB8 vibration meter and we've got a, um, a sanding machine here that we're going to do some pointless sanding on a bit of wood that absolutely doesn't need to be any flatter than it is. So just for the, the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to fix the accelerometer onto the tool um, and then we're going to get uh, Jack who's going to come along and, and do some sanding for us just to see what, what happens. So let's, let's, let's fix this onto here. Okay, so this is the accelerometer and we've got a, a block on the bottom here with a slot in it. Now, these slotted blocks are actually more ideal for Jubilee clips, but I'll, I'll just show you first of all with cable ties how that would be. So um, the jacker was going to be using it is going to be is right handed. So I think on this tool, probably find that the best place to fix it is around here because it's out of the way of his um, hand and yet it's uh, very close to the fingertip position. So we get a couple of cable ties put them through here. We re you really need to use two cable ties if you're going to use them. Put that one on just to get it secure. And the second one through the slot. Once we've got these roughly in place, we can use the cable tie tensioning tool to get them on there properly. So get them on there like that. Perfect. It's nice and fixed. Then we'll use the um, cable tie tensioning tool, which we just talked about before on the video. Put them like that. And that tensions and cuts all in one action. So you get a, a nice secure fixing. Well, that's pretty good on there actually. That's, that would be that, I'd be really pleased with that. And it's in about the right space. And if you want to, you can always clip these onto the cable just to keep that out of the way. Just going to cut these off right now and uh, put the Jubilee clip on so that you can see the difference. As I say, this kind of sometimes depends on the tool you're, you're working with. So a pair of cutters are always useful to have to uh, do this. So with a Jubilee clip, it can be slightly more fiddly until you get used to it. So this goes on there like that. 
So we're going to put it in the same position, but just using the Jubilee clip instead. So put those together like that. And then I'm going to use this um, cable tie, sorry, the Jubilee clip tightening screwdriver, if you like, with a, with a socket bit in the end. Put that on there. Once that's started, tighten that up. You can usually hear it. Yeah, that's really tight. So you get a really, really good fix on with that. Um, as I say, Jubilee clips are the preferable method for doing this because you do get this extra solid, rigid thing. So I think we'll leave that one on here and we'll um, get Jack to uh, do some sanding and we'll see what happens when we take a measurement. So Jack, I'd just like you to start the machine up for uh, the sander up for a short while yep. first, just so we can check that we're in the right range. I've got it in the low range at the moment, so fire up. Yep, that's, that's okay, thank you. So that's, we're definitely in the right range. Um, so I'm now ready to start measurements. So if it starts going and I'll tap you on the shoulder when we're done. Right, brilliant, we've got that measurement, so that's all good. Thank you very much, Jack. So we've brought the Dib A8 back into, um, back into the office, just have a, a quick look at the results after we've done our measurement out there with, uh, with Jack. Um, so we've switched it on and here's just the, the, the regular measuring screen. So just go into Menu, uh, File Manager, so we'll load up a file and then that's the one we did. That was the, the time and date we did it. It's okay there. So this is now bringing up the first screen of the, the measurements we took. So you can see that the AEQ or the average measurement for your three axes were 1.1, 2.9 or three and 2.2 ish. So they're the three measurements we got for each of the X, Y and Z axes. You can also on the screen look at the peak value uh, well, this this case, um, there weren't really many uh, high peak values, so there's nothing really exciting to look at there. Pressing the, the downward button key gives you another screen which shows all the exposure figures. So based on an eight hour working day, that would give us the A8 uh, exposure figure in meters per second squared. Also the vector sum, which of course is the same because we're basing it on eight hours. And then the time to reach the action value would be three hours and 21 minutes. Alternatively, the time to reach the limit value, the exposure limit value, would be 13 hours and 26 minutes. We want to, we can change the time. So we could change that to maybe say that that person was working on there for two hours and see what that does. We save that. So for two hours at a A8, AHW of 3.8 five the daily a8 exposure figure will be 1.92 or 2 meters per second squared press down key again and you can see we get the points so the points for two hours 60 for five minutes you'd be three points 15 minutes eight points 30 minutes 15 points and one hour would be 30 points so you can use this for uh, management afterwards to show people how many points they would uh, be exposed to in a given amount of time. The next screen simply has a simple uh, single number display of the A8 value based on the two hour measurement. So this is taken from one of the other screens anyway. And then following that is just some information about the the measurement that was taken, the time and date, what mode it was set in and that kind of information. And then back to the initial screen. So there we can see from that measurement we took on the, the sander sanding that block of wood pointlessly <laughs> that um, those are the results that we ended up with.
Hello, my name is Michael. I work in the service department at Castle Group and I'm going to be showing you how to do a field calibration of your vibration meter. Let's begin by first removing the mounting block. Your kit should have an Allen key of an appropriate size. Simply apply that to the screw and then remove the block. There we go. Just put that out of the way. Uh, for use with the um, field calibrator, you should have a mounting piece and some uh, petro wax for holding the accelerometer in place. Um, we've already applied some wax to this mounting piece for speed. Then apply that to the appropriate axis. We're beginning with the x-axis. And then attach that to your shaker. There we go. So accelerometer is now attached to the shaker and now we set the instrument into the calibration mode. And so uh, currently the instrument's just reading as per normal. If we were to put the uh, shaker on now, this would just give us an indication of the WH weighted value, which is not the same as the known output of the shaker. So instead, we go into the menu, select hand arm setup, or the appropriate calibration function of your particular instrument. Here we go to oops, <laughs> calibration. Um, check for the uh, calibrator level if that's available on your instrument. And in this particular case, the calibrator level here is 9.95. And that is saved. And we can exit. And we then go to calibrator input. Channel one is attached, which is X. And the instrument will now display its defaulted uncalibrated value and correct to the appropriate level. And there we are. And so the unweighted display there, we're showing you that. That's done. If we now exit and now go to our manual input, we can see that the instrument has generated a calibration factor for use with that particular accelerometer on this particular handset. No need to save, it's already saved at this stage. And if we go to the home value, you'll see it's now giving a corrected value for the calibration. And now we've calibrated the x-axis, we'll simply repeat that for y and z.